Right, welcome to today's episode of the Guest Safety Lobby Group podcast. Today we have Trevor Henry and Ian Fox, and we'll be discussing about what is competency, compliance, and the laws around it. Welcome, Trevor. Thanks, Gary. Ian, thanks very much indeed for uh, inviting me along. I appreciate it. Um, please, uh, happy to have an enjoyable and informative and hopefully a fun discussion between the three. Right, so. And as, uh, well, well as, as always, we've got Ian here. So good morning to you, Ian. Yeah, it's great to be here, and uh, you know, let's let's crack on because you know, Trebell is a, a film star now, well, a TV star, um, and hopefully we will drop the links to that episode uh, at the end of the show. Right. So, so to kick this all off, first of all, what is compliance, guys? What is compliance? Who do you want to answer this? Either one of you. Trebell, go first. Yeah. Yeah, okay. All right. So compliance, then, from a broader perspective, my interpretation around compliance from reading information I've received over time is really about following rules. So, And if we break that down a little bit further, because we can look at it from a law perspective, but if we look at it from a regulatory perspective, i.e. different sectors in themselves, so, you know... Um, Maybe uh, an inquest has occurred. On the back of that inquest, there's some rulings that come out. It involves, let's say, a specific sector. So, you know, uh, colloquially, then what may happen from there, then that sector then has to produce some new regulations around it, some new governance. And then, therefore, then with that new regulation, it's disseminated down in terms of policies, procedures, training, et cetera, then if you wish, they're the rules that that regulate, people involved in that regulation are expected to follow. Uh, hopefully that wasn't too kind of convoluted, apologies. No, I, well, and I was going to say, and what's your take on compliance? The compliance is, uh, it's about essentially, from my understanding, it's how we set the rules. So something or some bond can be classed as being compliant uh, with the rules and regulations within the terms of the set parameters of regulatory bodies. For me, the real issue about this is quite often compliance results in form formality um, over substance. So it's mainly done in a lot of cases as a result or an attempt to appease regulatory bodies and insurers and that obviously carries risks as far as i'm concerned in terms of what that does but we can discuss that a bit later that's my view of the idea of compliance that it's meant to work and serve the law and public safety in our instance but it depends on how it's interpreted and implemented. Oh, okay. okay, so let's put this down to a point of, let's look at it as the, the, guest, the guest safety officer. They'll go off, they do their training, they get the license, they've had everything done, the regulatory bodies give them a license. Are they are they compliant now? Even one of you to answer that question, is that person or person compliant and they're able to do the job which they've been, which, which they've been tasked to do or the job they've been uh, trained to do? Give me if I slightly change change the focus, if you don't mind, in terms of the answer to the question. Yeah. Because they are competent, aren't they, in terms of they attain the knowledge, understanding skills. I'm, I'm gonna stop abilities. you there, Trevor. Trevor, right. let me stop you there. The difference between competent and compliance, which you wouldn't would look at. Uh, you know, that's, that's gonna be my next question. Are they competent? But we're looking at compliance. You know, they've given a license to practice security, but you know, that, that's just compliance. It, it, we, we agreed but, on that or not agreed on that? But, but for example, and forgive me if this seems uh, an example way off a tangent. Yeah. But arguably when I pass my driving test and I go out on the road day one, I'm compliant within the laws of driving? So you're compliant, with, but, I, but are you competent? All right, so okay. This, well, this, is this, I was, this is what I was trying to, this is what I was trying this, to get. Yeah, yeah so I'm let's, let's, now because I've got a driving license which says yeah. I've performed to that set standard. Until, forgive me, but until a challenge or an issue is 
arises, that's when it's going to really come into question, isn't it? So let's go back to my next question. Let's go straight on to that. Is you know, what's the difference between competency then? As you as you as you start this, what's your version of competency there? Yeah, competency is yeah, as I touched on briefly there. But isn't it, for example, let's say through a program of learning, somebody's demonstrated that they've got the knowledge, understanding, skills, and the abilities. If you wish to perform those sets of skills or and or techniques in themselves, and they've done that successfully, hence this certificate of competence, as it's more commonly known in lots of areas these days, which I appreciate creates debates amongst people. That's Ian, so if we find that same question to you, what is competency for you, Ian? Competency is the ability for a person to carry out the necessary skills uh, actually carry them out effectively so you are competent at doing something it, you, it, there is a difference between compliance and competence which again we'll discuss probably in a little bit more detail in a minute or two but competence is the, is about having the the knowledge and the ability to carry out those skills so Trevelli's quite right in when he turns around and says when you get a driving license, you are adjudged to be competent to actually be on the road. You may have a P, yeah, <laughs> ration on your on your, on the back of your back and front of your car, but you are classed as being co sufficiently competent to go on the road without hurting or potentially hurting other pedestrians and road users there is a slight difference for me in terms of what competency means and compliance when you pass your theory in a driving license you, you do which is a separate test obviously you, that doesn't mean that you are compliant to go on the road and that is a, you know you are you've complied you now know or are supposed to know what all of the different rules regulations and signage that you will see on that on your journeys as you go around but it doesn't mean that you are yet competent to go on the road so that's for me is the difference compliance you know the theoretical understanding you've been given something Competent is the physical ability to actually deliver that in practice. So what would you say on this, Travel? Um, that's well, from my introductory answer around compliance, but it's isn't it? It's obeying working to a set of rules and standards. You know, and you know yeah, I hesitate slightly, but until such time as you, me, Ian, or A and others called into question about their performance, then we're arguably complying, aren't we? Yeah, I agree with you. We are, we are complying. And that's, the thing about it is, but, 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 but are they competent to do the job? But that, that's, that's the, that's, that's the, the point. They are different, Gary. Sorry, but they are, oh. they are completely different within the context of... So from so if you were to go to a court of law now about it and say, are you compliant? Yeah, then 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 from the legal point of view, you are compliant. You, you have done X, Y, and Z, you have followed this, you you have followed this program. What the law doesn't say in terms of compliance is are you competent? In, and the and the and the idea of that it is then up to you to use the knowledge that made you compliant to become competent in what you're or demonstrate competence. So in the event there's an accident or something goes wrong, yeah, and whether you're using drive the driving analogy or you're using a guest safety officer at an event thing, they are technically compliant in the eyes of the law 
and that yeah and and are therefore technically responsible for their actions it it doesn't necessarily follow the law doesn't actually require competence as part of compliance that is that, that's what they as, as that's my understanding of it it is not so we can what what sometimes happens is people make the mistake or perhaps not a mistake uh, understandably draw the conclusion that well if you've got a and it means you can do b then you must be competent to do c and d you could because you can't get you can't do d unless you've got a or you can't do c unless you've got b because there's a thing, but that isn't necessarily always the case the competency side of it that is uh, i think one of the biggest misnomers about it but um you know, it's it, again it's a, a a very nuanced situation very difficult to sort of think because it's like and i'm just going to use this final thing because travel used um the issue of a driving license, which I wholeheartedly agree with, and think that that should be standard practice within the security industry anyway. But it's that license to practice. You get a driving license, which means you are competent. You get a medical license as a doctor. You know, you are licensed to be a doctor, having undergone theoretical and practical training. The same applies when you do um what's a what's another one uh, oh, i can't i can't think of one but y you know what i mean it's those kind of it's those kind of events or situations where you actually require a license which must also go must also include a clear demonstration that you have achieved the necessary competencies to do it but for instance you wouldn't want me pulling your teeth out would you I've seen it in a cartoon. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want me? Yeah, I've seen it. I've seen a cartoon with a dentist. Do you want me to pull your teeth out uh, or do some brain surgery? The answer is going to be no. Uh, okay. Let, 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 me just, let, let me just put it in context because we, we, we're here for a guest safety officer and people working this in our in our environment. So what, what we're saying is, is compliance. They're compliant. They've given license to practice. They're, they're now compliant within the law because they've got this license. And what is it saying that they are now competent to do the job? And that's the, that's the next question. Are these guest safety officers competent? Now, we've got two, two sides of that. You're saying, well, yes and no. And Trevor is saying they are competent because they've got for the necessary things. Um, you've you said state what the law might, might be around that. But if these guest safety officers are not doing continuous professional development, i.e. like medical doctors have to, and bits and pieces, they have to be continuous developing themselves. Guest safety officers aren't. So are they still competent after a year? Are they still competent when they left that training? Training. That's the question I'm putting to both of you now. I think I'll take this one first, Travel, if I'm uh, saying that. Yeah, thing, ahead, and, and then, because then you can clarify anything that, you know, because you know more about this kind of stuff than me, is, um, is that, the person who takes the training, who goes through, and and will, and I will keep it and refer it just in terms of um, guest safety officers, and in particular the SIA training, uh, or or indeed um, MVQ training that people take. The MVQ training is a little bit different, but it, the basic mm -hmm. premise is the same. Are you? compliant when you have done this training the answer is yes of course you're compliant and you're going to be compliant throughout is it that isn't about that is a bit so you so when we talk about your um continuous professional development you can still do continuous professional development from a theoretical point of view you can update yourself on the law you can update yourself on x y and z what you're talking about and these are two separate things gary is that you've got the physical ability to learn how to do the job which makes you competent 
yeah the competencies that actually enable you to do the job thing they are completely separate and it's really important that from a guest safety officer perspective they are kept separate because when we go into the physical intervention side that can occur in that environment uh, then and this is perhaps i think where travel can really open things up for us is we learn how to do a certain number of techniques don't we and then it's up to us to continually practice them to ensure that we develop the skill, the skills necessary or for us to be competent in that. I, I don't know, Travel, am I? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. And just picking up on the back of that, as in in most, if not all sectors, will, you know, subject to, I'm going to call them environmental needs around, you know, information that's been uh, uh, collated, sorry, my apology, yeah. if information that's been collated, then we'll come up with a range of techniques, strokes, skills, without going off at a tangent into debates around yeah. what we feel, you know, fit the need, yeah? So if we've got, I don't know, let's say a, a range of seven techniques for ease of discussion, yeah, purely for ease of discussion, yeah, yeah? and over a period of time, we find that of the one to seven, you know, we're using, let's say, in context, frequently in context, which might only be twice, by the way, just to keep it. Yeah. yeah. So two being frequent. But, you know, we're using skills two to seven, but we're not using skill one. So as part of the wider CPD and environmental need and review, it may well be not that we take out skill one, yeah, but the focus remains around two to seven, for example, we appreciate I'm using I'm using the broad overview here. Equally, it may well be as part of that review, yeah, people, let's just say from a dynamic risk perspective, because that's the language people understand, we've been adapting to certain situations with, I'm going to say, either a certain individual or people who are displaying similar behaviours, yeah. So we may well incorporate then a technique number eight, yeah, that fits that particular need. What I'm trying to get to is, it's fluid, yeah, and it needs to remain fluid. But I think in a, in line with that, Gary, is a, in line you know, along with your question, uh, which Ian you know, answered. But I think the additional part of that, whether we call them supervisors, line managers, whatever the terminology we use, but organisationally, they've got a responsibility, haven't they? You know, for ensuring that that person CPD wrong, that individual has the opportunity to maintain the CPD or the evidence why they haven't maintained it, yeah, themselves. So, so would that make them competent or non-competent then? Well, they well I'll come back, but the, the supervisor or the line manager, he, she, they, will be the ones who will either the opportunity for them to have attained the CPD standards and sign them off as competent, or the area for review, i.e., um, uh, remedial training, if I can call it remedial training, I'm not saying the medically ill, I'm just using that as a generic reference. But that's where, isn't it, organizationally, they were the signed office competent or they need remedial training to bring them up to the standard of being competent. Yeah. Ian. Uh, that, I think uh, I think that's right because, and, uh, and I just want to just fix, fix in here for, for one moment, because at, at the end, I would like just very briefly sort of finish on the overview on, on, on this. But, and Travella, I think you and I totally agree that when we're working within PI itself, physical interventions specifically, that the bedrock, the foundation that we have to work to um, then because it's dynamic is invariably going to be common law i, I think that uh, i think yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. it's going to be the common is going to be common law uh, because for that for the very reason that it's dynamic so therefore you know it isn't this sort of the a key thing that needs to be demonstrated to, by um, a, a key competent Piece, piece of the competency requirement that I or any other guest safety officer 
fully understands what they what their common law responses are the extent of their common common law responses a yes uh but just to kind of uh, expand on that slightly yeah um so we go back to don't we regarding you know competency or competences you know knowledge understanding skills i was talking about abilities comprehension yeah so let's just say and you you made reference to it earlier let's say from a the theoretical perspective then part of that that course program yeah the theory aspect as you say relating to common law then we'll want they will set let's say a case study review yeah, we'll go through that case study review where there are some exemplar answers, responses, because as we know, very few things are definitive in, in the kind of when it comes to managing, managing people, managing and supporting people. Sorry. Yeah. So we'll have a case study review, which, you know, the individuals then can theoretically evidence that they meet the standards around the case study review, around those responses in the first instance before they go on to, let's say, some level of practical learning. Yeah, because then we can put the skills, abilities, sorry, not trying to be patronizing to anybody, but you know, we need that knowledge first, don't we, the understanding of that knowledge? Yeah. Before, ideally, we go on to the skills element of it. And then, you know, all things being well, then we've got the comprehension coming back to, Gary, your point, you know, we're competent, compliant within the process. There, there you go. Well, we're running out of time, gents. And uh, I mean, I, I think this, we could go quite deep onto this. Um, Ian, would you want to quickly sum this up for us? And then I'll throw back to your, your summarise of this, Travel. The uh, Yeah, thanks, Gary. The, uh, for me, this is fairly straightforward. I don't think there's an issue in terms of the compliance uh, requirement. I think the issue... From where from where I sit, both uh, from a GSO you know, guest safety officer perspective, in terms of the training and 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 for PI, is that it's not delivered in the right manner. The effort, the ethical and ethic and efficacy of said training is people know that the training that is being delivered or more to the point the organizations know they are taking people on whose compliance who are being trained whose compliance training is inadequate or hasn't happened at all now i'm going to obviously say one of the reasons we got Travel here is cuz that doesn't happen with NFPS, they actually spend a great deal of time going through that to ensure the people that they deal with have the necessary foundations across the whole piece. But in terms of guest safety officers, they're not competent. No one is competent when they finish their SIA training at all. They've got no chance of being competent at that particular moment in time. They need to have further professional development and that we need as an organisation uh, and as a sector to start transitioning from compliance-led training, which is ineffective for a whole host of reasons that we haven't got time for, and move towards transitioning to competence of the nature that I think Travel was alluding to, i.e. you got a driving license, so I know that you're competent. And in fact, I think our mate Nick Shackleton Jones said uh, you know, the said that was good, didn't he? Um he was he was a previous guest. No, I, I gathered that. I just wasn't sure he was. I'm just trying to reflect. Yeah, he's a previous guest, uh, an expert on learning and development. All right, okay. So, um, Bill, some yeah, I, I think, um, interestingly, because if we think about competence and we think about any training courses about, you know, giving somebody confidence, isn't it, to apply the training? Yeah. But the argument for all of us goes, until we actually put the training into practice in a workplace setting, 
we individually don't know, do we, how truly successful the learning we've had was, you know. But ironically, certainly, a yes, safety officer from managing behaviours, you know, certainly let's say physical intervention to make it a tangible point, sorry, yeah. If we're not having to physically intervene, then, you know, it's fair to suggest to a larger degree, keeping the risk in perspective, that actually we're doing the job well. Yeah. And I appreciate that opens up a can of worms. I appreciate that to a lot of people. But, but you know, but you know, I'm sure, you know, people who've been on courses with me will know full well, I've said it often, when I meet you in 12 months time, if none of you have had to use force, then surely that's not a bad thing. Unless I'm missing the point. Um, well, um, I don't think you missed the point. I think what we're really looking at is, is again, it falls back on compliance and competency. And I'm, I'm going to summarize, well, I'm going to finalize things up now. So, you know, compliance and competency. You know, compliance is, from, from what we gathered, is, is what Ian says. You're doing the courses, it makes you, you know, you've complied. But as you said, once you come out, you're deemed compliant. So, compliant client, compliancy and competency. You know, it's it's a it's a mixed balance. You know, and what is a real law going to say on this? Um, I'm going to draw. We're going to end it on that point. I'm going to say thank you, Trevell, for your input today. I really appreciate okay. it. Thank for Ian again for being my uh, partner in crime on the, on the site, and for everybody out there. If you like what we're doing and you'd like to subscribe, subscribe, please put a thumbs up and subscribe to our link below. And if you've got any questions, please please feel free to either DM us. We can put you in touch with Trevell or um, send us an email. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye. Okay, thank you.